Hi, I'm Adam Vickerstaff and here's my overview of fast environment design and the construction of Lake Town based on the concept by John Howe. The original concept I took from the Hobbit Art and Design book and began the construction and development of the 3D piece with the permission of the original artist. The 3D piece I constructed was developed using Marmoset Toolbag as the renderer, which allowed updates in real time through Maya and Substance Painter. From other angles you can see how I set about the construction and develop the piece just from the one angle and camera view. If stepping away from that view, the piece falls apart. This is in essence a scene seen from just one angle, with the camera that supports panning across the surface of the water to the final still image all allowed in real time due to Mamsa's capabilities as basically an engine for your 3D models. From my frame view you can see how I set about the construction of each separate object in the scene, noting that closer to the camera the more detail I added and further away the less. Also take note, and someone won't be able to tell already, in some places I have to decimate rather than be apologize quick method but one I knew I could implement in this scene without issues with the frame rate or any other smoothing issues. By clicking around the scene you can see how I separate each element to chunks to work on. A similar textures such as wood, the fishing pops, and the fishing tackle I constructed at the same time and combined them into the scene as one element. This was decided beforehand by a painter of other components. By studying the scene and taking note where repeating shapes could be used, I developed an asset list. Here the paint over highlights where similar colours, such as the slightest green of the wood beams, can be reused and repeated and flipped to reuse elements without them appearing repeating. From the paint over I construct an object list of reusable items, so as you can see by the finished scene, the deconstruction has allowed for the construction of the scene in an exceptionally fast and productive way. Here the wood beams also are reused, repeated and flipped in a variety of ways to prevent that repeating pattern that can ruin the scene. Here the fishing rig is used a number of times, sometimes flipped, to prevent the repetitive feel. The fishing oil parts and cooking parts are made as one solid object, again to save memory when imposing it to the scene, and save time in the construction process, but the actual oil itself is a separate mesh sitting on top of the wood, rather than part of the wood. In essence using the same process that I used later on in the creation of the net. The fishing tackle hanging up is the same fishing tackle used in the boxes, constructing the dead bush using the IMM bush into separate meshes. And the fishing mesh itself is a moulded plane with a pacing map to create the meshing. If turned off, you can see the fishing parts below. Looking around the environment more you can see the other varying elements such as barrel, lamps and the background elements like the water. The bridge, only half constructed since it wasn't needed in the scene, is taken from the front part of the scene and reused. Also noting that the objects further away again are exceptionally low poly 
and just for silhouette purposes. The water is a very simple technique of a normal map created with different clouds in Photoshop. Some tweaks of the material in Marmoset and that's it. Attached to a plane that frankly could have been simply one part later since it's all in the texture. Now looking at the scene without fog, you can see each object separately much clearer, and therefore dropping back to the first instance of the geometry, begin to understand how the scene was developed. The first scene was created using primitives very quickly in Maya and Marmoset, to test the geometry to therefore aim for the camera angle as the original pencil sketch. You can see each item has been placed as primitives that I will later to export, rework, and placed back in the scene in the same place, therefore creating a pipeline of sculpt, texture and substance and replaced back in the scene. I tested the lighting throughout this process, adjusting each moment a new asset was placed and refining each texture when needed, such as the wood beams to develop a more gritty feel to the scene. The wood in the walls be using the wood in the floor texture. Also take note how when the fog is added, the distance desaturates the view as in reality. And adding more lights in areas that can capture the interest and lead the eye, such as the fishing pots are missing and the further back lights. It's important to note how the eyes are led around the scene and hopefully I've managed to give the interest help in the original sketch. The lobster pots were created using one of the blockout spheres in Maya, the top cut off, and panel loops, then the lid slightly raised for masking. The ropes were drawn with a curved brush over duplicate, which gives us the final high polys. I like to separate meshes when baking. It allows for cleaner bakes and high polygon counts when baking. For this, since it's so close to the camera, I create a low poly with all the detail of the high in the topology. Since the rope area is so finicky, and rather than getting into a spaghetti of wireframe, I simply decimated. Check the mesh, then UV both by cutting and editing the polygroups until I got the cleanest UV map. This was all constructed again from the original lobster pot block out, as well as the rest of the scene, and then imported into substance for the materials. All the reusable materials in the scene, here the rope, I saved the smart material, and simply dragged them to the next object when needed. Explore the front section of the scene more, all the elements here I combined after creation to create the final net. This was a pretty easy process, but one I would love to share. It could also be implemented in a similar fashion for Marvelous Designer. Exploring the front section of scene more and how to create the net, here are all the elements I combined after creation to create the final net. By combining all elements that will be affected by the net, I can dynamize the separate objects and build up a net around the lobster pots. Polygroups and the net mesh extracted, nano mesh with an X shaped subtool, giving me a high poly and a low poly bake too. The low poly UV in ZBrush and a very simple material applied after the bake. The fishing tackle again used the rope presets I used throughout. The fishing tackle you see hanging from the pole, IMM brush and decimate together to form the boxes. This was using the same wood material as the floor and walls, again presets to add speed and efficiency to the build.
All the pops were created in one go. They're brushed up from the original block out, UV'd and decimated, before baking. The materials were created from tweaked substance files and some from scratch dependent on the look I wanted. The materials were all the same base, reworked slightly per object, different colour variations and dirt values. Some, such as the soup, were as simple as a glass reflection earlier, and only required a base and the highlights as the soup bubbles and ripples were all sculpted due to it being a still image. An emissive was applied to the cooking oven and pan, a laundry texture to the bucket of washing and the same goo to the other bucket. These were all applied using matte IDs and a final ambient occlusion applied over the top from low to low poly to make it appear more grounded. Lighting is altered throughout until final image is created, but note the variation in intensity as the lights dim away. The reflection of speckling on surfaces that leave the eye and finally how the fog plays a part in reducing the hue the further away you look, makes the horizon appear desaturated and slightly difficult to see, like an afterthought to the eye. The lobster pops, even though there and casting and reflecting light, are a part of the concept you notice later, which makes the viewer feel the whole image is exceptionally detailed, even though the further away the less detailed it is. The lights of the cooking pot also is used to accentuate the emissive, casting the glow of the coals to the floor, and the lights behind, slightly dimmed as they reduce, especially the lights on the right, that seem so unnoticed by the camera add to the image. And with the fog also enhancing the lighting, casting further diffusion to the area, the emissive and the lights further bloom. These subtle lights in the background casting a stream of light onto the water out of the sky map, placed with the hot spot of the map producing a sun or moon effect on the water towards the camera. I just wanted to thank you for watching this tutorial. This was featured in the Mamset Gallery and gave the CG Talk Editor's Big Award, which I'm immensely proud of. I hope you've learnt throughout this tutorial many tidbits, and I've managed to pass on some knowledge gained through my career as both a lecturer and 3D artist. Thank you for your time.